Um, and this last session, um, it's possible that some of you in the audience might think, well, this is a bit of a, a side dish. It's not necessarily a great deal of relevance. And I would, I would challenge you not to feel that. Hacktivism is a significant issue for all of us. And, and to put it into context, you could potentially describe hacktivism as non-destructive terrorism. It is about an organization, potentially a leaderless organization, but an organization with a political or other agenda seeking to achieve its aims with force by either striking fear or otherwise influencing organizations or enterprises. So from a commercial perspective, it's highly relevant. But also from a state perspective, it's highly relevant because terrorists often try and achieve their political aims by influencing through the attack of the economy or the attack of a sector. And therefore, it cannot actually be ignored as a topic by any of us. But I'm not an expert in this field. We've got a panel who are, are, are just getting prepared, um, being led by um, Yusuf al Hafi, um, who has got far more experience and expertise to be able to talk in this, uh, in, in this topic. He's, um, he's been an expert in his field for more than 15 years. Another element that I think is of great value that he brings to here is that he's worked for the Ministry of Defense, You'll be next. for major international companies, You'll be next. and also for various okay. institutions. Uh, okay. And that means that you can hopefully bring a very holistic and cohesive viewpoint to this, not just taking one particular side, because as has run through a theme through this conference throughout, it's not something that one body or another body can Sorry, deal with. We've got to deal with it all together. Yeah, so without any further ado, Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I have with me uh, Haytham, Al uh, Hajri, Hatem Attai, and Mark Gartenberg. So please join me in. And we have uh, an, an easy session because no one in. <laughs> well, I want to stay here. <laughs> Uh, please, please. <laughs> yeah, hello, yeah, hello. Well, you know, so before anyone uh, could make it in, so let's finish it off. <laughs> um, I think most of the, um, the panelists have been introduced. Uh, Mark definitely have been introduced. Haytham works for Oman Sirt and Hatib for Aroya. I will not take much time to introduce anybody, so to, um, you know, save time and go into it. As a military man, we'll just get into and start, um, start the discussion. So, Mark, uh, what are we talking about here when it comes to hackatism? We'll make this more of an uh, interactive type discussion as we did before, hopefully. Uh, yeah, you know, I think we'll just run through uh, a question through the panel, and then we'll open the flare up uh, for discussion. So there will be no presentations. So I think they are tired of presentations. So if we... Sure, so basically, you know, what, what, what I'd like to share in, um, is that uh, we had a saying once, uh, if you remember the 1970s, you weren't there. Uh, the, Just born. In America. <laughs> in America. Um, I, I grew up in the 70s, and uh, I, I followed the generation of the 60s, and, and the word activism was a big word. Um, the activists of the 60s led to, I think, the change that we see in the world today. We see, at least in the United States today. Um, so, activism, as another ism, as another term of collectivism and so forth, as the isms go, is not necessarily a bad thing. Hacktivism, on the other hand, can be bad and it can be, well, good. I guess it's in the way. 
perspective that you take. Again, we talked earlier a little bit about intent. Uh, what, what's the intention? Uh, we, we had a couple of uh, uh, large-scale activists uh, that uh, claimed their notoriety, Kevin Assange, and they ring a bell, I think. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where Kevin is right now. He's in the Peru in embassy hanging out, I'm not sure exactly. Um, and the thing is, you could draw some parallels to the activists and activists in the sense that everybody kind of believes doing the right thing. But how you do it and why you do it, what's the intent? What's, what's the damage? What's the harm? What, what did uh, WikiLeaks create? Uh, I helped build the Cypernet. I, I, uh, I was responsible for deploying um, the uh, Cypernet and upgraded the infrastructure in every embassy and uh, American consul around the uh, world. Um, so I was a, kind of an early enabler of that technology, and I recognized what the uh, problems was. I love the installation team, by the way, in Beijing, and so uh, I have some experience from that standpoint uh, in physical security and uh, other aspects. But what I want to talk about is uh, the, the reasons behind some of the problems. If you think there aren't any damage that's created or physical harm, think about what the outcomes were from the activist activity that took place as a result of WikiLeaks. How many people died uh, in the course of the stories that were released and that became a public relations nightmare? Um, and uh, governments didn't know how to necessarily deal with it because they weren't prepared. Uh, so part of it is having a plan, and um, I guess the key to the whole public relations nightmare that governments and individual agencies and individual so, organizations uh, face. Mark, you know, on how to deal with it, you know, that will be a different dimensions. So Haytham, uh, taking from that, what's the situation um, locally and, re and regionally? What, what situation in? in? In the hacktivism. As well, a movement, has it, has it taken place in here? Of course. Um, well, today's my point of view, actually, is the differences between being a hacktivist and being a hacker and being a cyber terrorist. I mean, obviously, there is a difference, and people meant to confuse both of them as being just an act of one. But as my colleague said, hacktivists can be a good thing and could be a bad thing. In, 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 in what aspect? In one aspect. What are hacktivists? Yes. They think of themselves in a way that uh, they, are, they are freedom of speech. That's what they endorse, that mm. we, we should be able to, be a, to have our freedom of speech. Uh, we have, for example, the, the Go Green Wild. They, they don't want to cut trees. They, they want to be an activist in real life, but they want to protest online. So they became activists. They're publishing uh, their banners and saying, stop cutting trees and so on. Those are activists. But if you have political motivation behind it, or a religious, or an ideology, then it becomes something else. So what is that something else? It becomes more of, uh, see, it, the point here is becoming bad. See, for example, if there is a, motiv a political motivation behind it, say, uh, rebel against a government or against something else, then it becomes... Do you agree on that, Mark? That uh, hacktivism with a... Political motivated um, intent it they, is not a hacktivism. The, the, there's the word intent again. Yeah. And, and, and how is it being played out on the uh, world stage? And who's the target? Who's the audience? Uh, uh, what's the cause? Sometimes the cause is just. Sometimes there, there's, there's justification behind the cause. So we really get into very subjective area when we talk about it. So the line is very blurred between the two. Yeah. So before we forget all about um, Hatem, Hatem in the Arabic Spring, and we have seen um, uh, the role of social media played to, to the extreme, probably. Um, has that, you know, could we consider that as an act of activism as well? I don't think exactly it is like that, because I think the Arab Spring is a, a very separate issue. Okay, it used the social network to gather people, to activate, to mobilize people around. But we saw, we saw a lot of defacement during that time as well, of government uh, sites being hacked. 
Yes, I think that happened, but that's, that happened and it was, uh, actually it was considered as a mistake also mm -hmm. because it makes more anger against the government. Mm -hmm. and that's what happened in Egypt. I mean, two hours or a few hours, mm -hmm. cutting the internet was not the solution. Actually, it made things worse. Yes. Uh, Mark, in terms, uh, you know, there's always uh, the perception that the Western world have this subjective, um, probably, um, labeling. When it comes to just cause, because what is just cause? You know, what is just for you could be uh, in terms of cultural. I'm talking about the cultural dimensions and difference between the West and the East. So when it is coming from the West, it is hacktivism. It is for a good cause. What it is coming from the East, it is uh, act of tourism, arc of um, vandalism. Is, is that, um, you know, who, who can judge on intent and what is, what is just? And what See, is just to you, it could be not, it's not just yeah. to others. I, I don't know if I'd break it down by political boundaries necessarily. Mm -hmm. Because we, we talk about we, 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 talk, we talk about we talk about causes. Yes. We talk about effect. Yes. We talk about uh, issues, and these are uh, very very high level things that are common to all people. I think mm -hmm. that we all share opinions. Mm -hmm. We all have opinions. Now, how we vocalize and how we express those opinions uh, is basic just human interaction. And, 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 and we have procedures for these types of things. In terms of hacktivists now, yes, yes. when we enter that dimension, I think we have to look at it from a different perspective. And again, from a universalist and a globalist perspective, we have to look at what the cause is, what the agenda is, what the effect is, what the methodology is. We have to look at a the number of dimensions. Is, the problem is what you said before, it is for a just cause and who determine what is a just cause? What is, could be just for you? Could be, uh, you know, so Again. does that plays into it, into, um, you know, making other people, you know, um, look evil and people look saint? And does it go into East and West? Um, no, I hmm. think it transcends that. I think it's global. It's I, global. I, I, yes, uh, in my opinion, humble opinion. I think, I think this is a global it's, issue. Yes. And in terms of what we might call just, huh. it's a very subjective word. Yes. So, uh, Hat, Hatem, how do you see this being covered in the Western media in terms of what is coming probably from Iran to retaliate against um, you know, what has been done on Stuxnet and things like this? You know, they, they did the retaliation, probably it, it had some sympathy, uh, you know, the attack on Iran. But then, you know, when Iran retaliated, probably the West didn't cover, the Western media didn't cover it in the same sense. Mm -hmm. How do you see that played out? Uh, I think, you know, there is, of course, uh, aggression and wars happening in different levels. Mm -hmm. Now, before, you have the serious weapons that you have, but also now you have the internet as to launch a cyber uh, war against your enemy. Mm -hmm. But I think it's our role, whether I speak for the media, I cannot speak about in terms of the exact political stand for was it correct for Iran to counterattack? No, no, I mean, you know, what I, my question was, yes. how was it covered in the media? Was it covered, is, is it balanced? No, I don't, anyway, I don't think that the Western media is balanced anyway, mm -hmm. because they are protecting certain interests and they have certain objectives. So... But Mark say it is universal. I, it's not universal. I don't think there is such thing as universal. Okay, the internet usage is international uh, usage, but every country is using it for own interest. I think that's uh, what is happening. The media itself is not neutral. The media itself is a point of view. You all know the slogan of New York Times, the news that's fit to print. But we are also asking, fit in terms of whom? For whom? Whose position? So no, media is not neutral and it's always biased. That's for sure. Mark? I agree. 
Uh, there's two ways of getting information. I think you can pull the information, mm -hmm. or you can have the information pushed. Mm -hmm. um, when we talk about media, I think we're talking about, uh, from the perspective that we just heard, is it's being pushed. Mm -hmm. and, but, and when it gets pushed, there's an agenda. Yeah, no, but the thing is, media, but nothing, the, um, the writers within the newspapers are nothing but a reflection of that society. They speak, you know, they read, they read from their perspective, and they write from their perspectives. So maybe what they write is a reflection of their society, how their society view things. Mm -hmm. So in this way, so here, you know, uh, villains and angels could be very subjective because, you know, um, while certain universal <coughs> truths are transcendent, a society, but there are certain political or you know, social and cultural motivation could be viewed differently. And there are agendas. And there are agendas. And those agendas, of course, come down to geopolitical issues and geopolitical agendas. Yes. yes. So, um, Haytham, in the cert, how you guys you know, are planning to um, you know, deal with this issue? Dealing with the issue of activism? Yes. Well, it depends, really. Like, as, as I say again, it's a reflection of the people itself. So if once hero or a freedom fighter could be viewed as cyber terrorism, the opposite side. So it depends on the situation itself, where uh, what he have been doing. What are you doing about it? For example, if he is creating a web page and he is promoting against something, mm -hmm. and that something is kind of illegal or that, as cert, the incident response team will actually report to that incident and categorize it according to whatever we have categorized. So if it was malicious, then it will be treated as malicious. In this Do case, you have an it, active program to deal with this particular issue? Yes, in certain incident response, they have programs and categories where they can categorize. No, I mean, whether. you as a Roman search, do you have a program active to deal with activism? At the moment, no, but we have future as well, becoming a regional center, we'll be doing yes. more on that. So Hatem, how is the media could contribute with dealing with this? Um, Phenomena. Yes, I think the media actually can play a lot of role because the potential is there. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the main problems, of course, mm -hmm. that we don't have in the media, we need partners to make this campaign successful. Mm -hmm. And this partner is actually you. Mm -hmm. The experts have to help us to convey our message. The proactive citizens who are reporting about certain activism, that's also very important. So we cannot work alone. We need to work with other organization to make our message through. Uh, our role is probably that to use the technical information and make it into a simple language so that it can reach to the general audience that this act is very, very dangerous and it's, an, it's very serious. It's not isolated incidents. So, so Hatem, in here, you know, what strikes me is this notion of audience. So Mark, when we talk about audience, What's the typical profile of a uh, hacktivism, a uh, hacktivist? Hacktivist believes in their cause. You know, in terms, if we want to say some, you know, um, characteristic, what sort of age group we're looking at, and uh, do, do they have some um, demographics? I, I really think that depends, um, because it depends. And I'll tell you why. Because a hacktivist can be a hero in some children's minds. Yes. Hacktivist can be someone uh, that, uh, if children are not trained properly and educated properly in, in the mores and, 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 and the societal norms to understand what's the difference between correct and incorrect behavior, mm -hmm. hacktivism can be translated uh, as, as heroism in a sense. Yeah, but then people who um, you know, um, take these actions, who engage in hacktivism? What sort of their demographics? What are we talking? Young people, old people, it gen doesn't, gender? It doesn't matter. I think it crosses all geopolitical boundaries, and I think it crosses all age groups and spans. Because uh, if you look at the, um, the paradigm of hacktivism in and of itself, you're talking about uh, people who will initiate the cause, then you have the media who perpetuates the cause, and then you have the talking heads on the media who then tend to either take up that cause or, 
or, or, or, or push their particular point of view. So I think the, the, the spectrum is very broad. As far as the hacktivists themselves, I mean, these are people who have a belief, a belief in something. Yes. Now, now as far as judging that something, uh, who, the, who, who is who's to right make that? The, yeah, uh, that's something subjective. You know, Hatem, why this is important? Because if you don't know who you are targeting in terms to educate, then, you know, uh, it, it will be problematic. And the issue here for in Oman is uh, magnified, and for you as well, because you are a printed press. And we have in Oman 70% of the age group are below 30, and they are more and more on, on social media. They are more and more on, on online. You know, probably your sales and the printed newspaper sales is, is in decline. And, uh, it's an increase. Is, uh, probably there will be, I mean, worldwide, you know, yes. a, a printed press is in decline. And uh, so uh, do you guys have an intention to reach this group of growing 70% of the population? Sure. For us as a newspaper, actually, we are very active in the social media. Mm -hmm. The newspaper is in Facebook. It is on Twitter. Mm -hmm. It has a website. We are very active on the Internet. Mm -hmm. Of course, the printed media is very important. But that's not covering for us all the market. We are targeting to young audience, young readers who are using the social media, yeah. and we are uh, actually making the best out of that. It's, pro it's not enough to be now in the newspaper as a print matter. Yeah, the thing is, uh, there are two components there. There's the channel, which this is printed or online, but then there is the content as well. What is, you know, the writing for young generation probably is different. What, you know, um, the way to reach them out, they are, less, they are less verbal, they are more visual, they are more video, in terms of content as well, you know, how do you see that? Oh yes, I'm sure, I mean, uh, social media is not, uh, it needs a different language, in a way that the language that is simpler, shorter, uh, more visual, that's for sure. We, we are not copying exactly what we have in the newspaper to the website as it is. I think it's very important to have it more interactive. We have lots of but feedback. But you know, to be truthful, yes. most of the newspapers, when they go online, it's just another version, a PDF version of the printed uh, newspaper. So yes, I think that's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem, and it has to be challenged and changed. OK, good. So now, uh, I guess we will open the floor up for questions. I'd, I'd like to make one, one, okay. good. one last point, because uh, I think it's important we talk about what to do. Mm. How do we deal with it? Yes. Um, and um, one of the things that we have in the West, and, uh, uh, been pushing this forward a little bit more now with uh, the new executive order that was just released uh, about a month or so ago by President Obama and lack of congressional uh, uh, harmony in doing something about uh, cybersecurity is, is, is plan. Okay, uh, I think the whole notion of having a contingency plan, and there's a structure. Uh, we have the National in uh, Institute for uh, Standards and Technology in the United States, uh, NIST. Uh, NIST is chartered under the Department of Commerce, and uh, NIST puts out guidance, and there's specific guidance, 800-34 in NIST, that talks about a contingency plan. Part of a contingency plan is having a communications plan, and you have to plan for these activities. You have to plan for the worst case scenario in the event that your company is targeted or your enterprise is targeted in terms of a hacktivist type of activity. You need to be prepared for this. If you're prepared for it, then you have nothing to worry about, okay? It's how good are you prepared, how well are you prepared, how good is your posture. Yes, very well said. Also, I uh, wanted to add a point. You said the age group and geographic uh, locations. Well, as he said, it depends on the interests. So you have the youngsters who will be interested in doing something else. Mm. Uh, for example, the young group will be demanding more of uh, reducing tax, uh, house loans, and so on. So they'll be activists in this field, where the older group probably will be more of a health care and uh, retirement. So there will be more activity in that area. Also, it depends on geographical location. So you have what's in Europe. It doesn't apply the Middle East. It doesn't apply. Yes. Yes. And that's why you know, I didn't want to say much uh, about uh, Mark Remark, because um, I, have, I have trouble with, uh, with solution coming from the West, in which uh, you, know, you are talking about maturity of the society in terms of Western society more ro ro uh, laws, more planning, and this while in the East is, um, is probably the maturity and the fr of the ecosystem is not there. So um, 
probably will take that discussion offline. So uh, anyway, we'll, we'll open the floor for questions. Any questions? Well, thoughts is either, you know, we, we did a good job or we uh, totally confused it. We had totally, and I, and I think it is the latter. So anyway, better so, you know, you will have to ask a question because you made me come to this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, again, uh, an, an expert coming uh, from different region as well as the CERT. I think we talked about issues of activism. I really want to hear like a proposal for solutions from every panelist. What do you think we could do in order to make the best use of activism? Activism doesn't necessarily to be always bad. It's just like how we could make use of it, convert this to be something useful and beneficial to the countries. Okay, so, um, okay, that's a very good spin on it. Yes, and I think we'll go by age. You win. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, is, there, is there a positive aspect to, uh, to activism? Uh, yes. In what sense? In the sense that it brings the cause to uh, the, the, the surface. Issues need to be surfaced. Issues need to be discussed. How is another question. And uh, outcomes are another question. Maturity also factors into that as well. And I, I think you need to take all of these different type of uh, paradigms and put them together and come up with a plan uh, at several different levels. Uh, we look at the level of the individual at the hacktivist level. We might look at the enterprise and how it, ha it plans and how the government effectively planned in terms of its strategy relative to the media, which is supposed to be the fifth column and objective, but is not necessarily always the case. So, uh, planning, strategy, thinking ahead, understanding what the issues are that are currently alive and flourishing, and situational awareness. So if you take uh, the Wall Street uh, movement that you know, um, uh, was growing in, in the US, and they, the way they handled it is uh, it's amazing. They made us, you know, they contained it in a way. So reflecting on that, and did activism played on the Wall Street movement? Uh, yeah, the, 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 the move on and, and so forth, movements that uh, spread across the West uh, were dealt at a number of different levels. Uh, law enforcement uh, stepped in, and uh, media was forced to step out. And what went on behind the scenes uh, didn't make it to the uh, necessarily front pages of uh, the various uh, national uh, media in the United States. Were there hacktivists among the movement? Absolutely, because, because social media played a very strong part in that. Yes. So it was a matter of, uh, again, the planning and the strategy and uh, the interventions that took place from the various parties that were associated so with that. So do you reckon they were successful in, in dealing with I guess it depends uh, uh, in terms of who, the uh, hacktivists or the, uh, the way it was contained. As a society? Uh, I think as a society, it was contained. It was contained. It was contained. And, and I think containment is part of it. Uh, just like any spill uh, in a physical environment, any data spill in the virtual environment. So how did they manage to contain it? Uh, by combining the forces and uh, law, mm -hmm. um, by combining the, uh, the policies, and uh, by sometimes uh, carry a big stick, but talk softly. So the thing is, the positive aspect of activism in the Wall Street movement that was for a good cause to lower the, the divide, the, the socioeconomical divide mm -hmm. in the West, didn't realize its, its objective. 
I guess it depends who you talk to. You know? some, some people feel that they did what they needed to do in the time that they had to do it, and they, they made their point, and they moved on. Okay. Pitham, from your aspect? Well, from you my know? perspective, I mean, being a person working at CERT, our uh, main purpose is to serve and protect our critical infrastructure or our websites, per se, in the cyberspace itself. So I think we further investigate why that hacktivist or that activist has moved his cause from being an activist to online, because the whole reason is, activists basically, they are doing it now, they said, it's no longer I can go outside and protest, why don't I protest online? So I'll set up a web page and I'll advertise my cause, saying we gotta stop doing this and that. So further investigation in that. But, but the thing is, could you just take the positive spin from better and see, how could it be positive in our circumstances? Yes, I mean, it, it's a reflection of what's happening. So uh, being an activist, mm -hmm. I, the reason behind it is just to say that I'm not happy about so-and-so, mm -hmm. a major issue. Mm -hmm. And taking it online and more people are exposed to it, it's actually a positive thing because he's trying to stop a bad thing from happening or it's an ongoing thing. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, let's take a taxation raise. It's been raised up, why we are raising taxes and so on. So it's a concern. It's not necessarily a negative way, but if it went out of its way to hack others and commit a crime to be an activist, then that's a bad thing. Okay. So there's a one. Uh, okay, I think we all agree that there is lack of awareness in our society about activism. This is very known. And, but two weeks ago, I think we got a wake-up call that we all followed the news about Bank Muscat. Bank Muscat reported in the newspapers or to the public that 15 million Omani Rial just vanished. About 45 US million uh, US dollars, which is a very, very big amount. And until now, until today and this moment, we still don't have enough information. But that was absolutely criminal act. Yes, That was, had nothing of course. to do with uh, activism. That was a criminal... Uh, yes. Uh, what, what I want to say from this example, that it's very important to have more information about such incidents. Because if you don't make the people aware about such things happening in organization, in government, in all kinds, even in uh, personal uh, emails, whatever it is, but there is lots of damage happening on a day-to-day basis, and it's increased. And if we don't have enough awareness about these things happen and how it happens, we will not be able to protect ourselves. Now, to get back to your point, I think the media has to play a major role in this by writing about it, by having specialized pages about technology, about viruses, about computers, so that people get to be familiar with lots of concepts. So it's transparency is, the, is very the, important. Very important. Uh, here in the front. Yeah, um, and you started late, so uh, we're not going to give you the, uh, the, the opportunity to get off the stage on time. Um, my question, I'm going to present a scenario, and the sort of hacktivist scenario that is non-simplistic, it's complex, where actually the target of the hacktivism is going to find it very difficult to control the situation. For instance, a hacktivist organization that may be in a different part of the world, has a political agenda, wishes to influence a target region, a country, and does that by actually attacking the victims in a completely third part of the world. Organizations or businesses that may be allied to the target region. And therefore, the attack is between hacktivists and enterprise in a different part of the world. And yet, the target is the one that is potentially going to, how would you handle, what, have you got any ideas about the best approach to deal with that sort of situation? Because these are the sorts of scenarios that we need to consider and, and develop plans for. So, uh, Mark, yeah. uh, the collateral damage. That's a really good question. And I think that one of the things, as I mentioned earlier, was uh, a situational awareness clearly in terms of the industry in terms of the visibility of a particular industry or a particular uh, enterprise environment or, or agenda in which that enterprise is existing within. So understanding what it is that you are and what you stand for 
uh, is one way of becoming aware of the likelihood of you becoming a target. So as such, uh, an enterprise that's, uh, or an organization that's involved, say, in e ecology, uh, would be one that should be aware that this is a... Uh, should, uh, should, should the government lend, lend a hand to that organization? Uh, well, it depends what you mean by a hand. I mean, you know, uh, some hands are good and some hands are bad. Uh, I think uh, by taking the particular industries and categorizing them and, 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 and forming classifications and... Uh, I mean, but they were only targeted... From the government. They were only targeted for the mere reason of being part of that, you know, geographic location or part of that society. So or, or their cause. No. Or their cause. Or their cause, exactly. Gen, gen, generally, it's, it's, it's the cause yeah. of what it is that organization stands for. What, what is the front face of that organization? What are they representing? What are they standing for? Yeah. Once you have an understanding of that, and you can sort of back engineer what type of planning you need to implement in order to provide some protective measures and some countermeasures yeah. that you may want to consider and put into, uh, into your planning into your contingency planning and into your communications plan in particular as to how you control this public relations potential nightmare. Okay, good. Any more questions? Oh, well, with no more questions, I think you know, um, uh, we are done. And thanks a lot for your contribution and thoughts. And thank you for listening. Thank you very much indeed for a, a very insightful but complex topic to discuss. So uh, I think you had one of the more challenging tasks in this conference, and it's a, a nice topic for us to end on. But thank you very much, all of you. Ah, absolutely, absolutely. So I'm just going to try and attempt to draw things together, draw the, the lines and my conclusions in my mind together, which may or may not chime or agree with, with yours. In the course of the last two days, we've, we've covered a fairly broad spectrum. We've covered articulation of the threat, ranging from the deep detailed from Kevin through to the more conceptual. We've discussed practical advice, approaches to, to deal with the threat, to manage the threat. We've moved on to things around the policy today, the security policy implications, the law enforcement policy implications, the military policy implications, how we handle these things, how we bring consensus, how we bring a common understanding. And we've also, towards the tail end, in the last two sessions, we've discussed the realities of hacking, hacking for good, hacking for bad. Of course, much like terrorism, one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter, and this subjectivity is one of the challenges that we need to deal with. But if I look at some of the words that have lodged themselves in my mind in the, in, in the last two days. Things like awareness, collaboration, communication, risk, vulnerability, management, policy, law, sharing, caring, social engineering, boundaries, offense versus defense, war, effect, outcome, impact, ends, ways, and means, plans, preparedness, capacity, resilience, situational awareness, intelligence, and inevitable. And those are the things that are lodged in my mind. One of the things that has come out is whilst we've used the technology realities of the context we're dealing with, actually the debate has been around very human issues. They're very, very, very behavioral and policy-like issues rather than trying to solve a A plus B equals C technical problem because this is too complex for that. But if I would to draw those words into some sort of coherent message, and again, this is what I'm taking away, undoubtedly for the people here, there will be a similar number of different conclusions as there are different people. But I would say, to me, it's about managing risk. And to manage risk, we need to build capacity and resilience, which needs to be achieved through collaboration and communication, delivering a greater awareness of the threat. And by doing that, we can focus on the effect and the outcome the attacker is trying to achieve in order to minimize the impact, develop the plans, and plans is essential, in order to be able to deal with the inevitable, which is the fact that this is a risk we've got to deal with 
and we have to manage that risk. That's the opinion of Tom Burton and the message I'm taking away. I hope that whatever message you've taken away has been a positive one from the last two days because the one core theme that I think that there is is that united we stand, divided we fall. We must all collaborate in order to present a robust defense against these aggressive tactics, whether through crime, terrorism, or um, offensive military action that threaten our so social stability. I'm now going to hand over to um, our hosts, um, who I believe will, uh, will round off the session. Naveen.